The Mandwa starts with an orange-haired girl who is thinking about how she has known another girl for 10 years now. In all that time, there hasn't been a single moment when they've been friendly with one another. She wonders if there will ever come a day when they're able to get along. Suddenly, the maids notice the orange-haired girl and try to stop her from entering the room. However, the orange-haired girl doesn't listen and bursts into the room. We also learn that the other girl that she was referring to is named Larazi Atlanta. The orange-haired girl further believes that such a day will ever come where they both get along. We then learn that the orange-haired girl name is Ginger. As Larazi puts her teacup down, she says, Oh dear Ginger, I see you've come to visit completely unannounced. What could be so urgent that the precious daughter of a nobleman would abandon her dignity and barge into my study, huffing and puffing? Upon hearing this question, Ginger shouts back at Lirazi and swears at her. She also knows that Lirazi knows exactly why she's here. All of a sudden, Ginger gasps as she realizes that she sweared at Lirazi out loud when she didn't mean to. Meanwhile, Lirazi starts to chuckle and states to her that even her speech mannerisms lack refinement. Ginger sighs and agrees with Lirazi. She adds that she probably does sound rather vulgar when she's lost all sense of rationality. She further asks her what kind of refined daughter of a nobleman would seduce a man who is betrothed to another woman. As Lorazi takes a sip of her tea, she mentions to Ginger that she seems to be mistaken about something. Ginger shouts back at Lorazi by stating to her that she lured him away from her, just like she always does. Lorazi confirms with Ginger if that's true and questions her about what if Kiki was the one who came on to her like always. She also asks her if she rushed over here to try and reclaim her fiancé betrayed her. As Ginger clenches her dress, she swears at Lirazi even more and threatens her. Lirazi then tells Ginger that they've been friends for 10 years, so she's only saying this out of concern for her. She adds that she should really develop better taste in men. Lirazi further calls out to Kiki and mentions to him to come out now as there's no need for him to hide any longer. Upon hearing this statement, Kiki, whose full name is Kishan Michelson, comes out of Lirazi's closet. This makes Ginger flinch as she's surprised to see him. She then takes off her hat and questions him about why he's here. She adds to tell her exactly why he was hiding in Lirazi's closet while wearing the suit she bought for him. As Kiki is shuddering, he calls out to Ginger. However, Ginger interrupts him and mentions to him that he shouldn't dare speak her name with that filthy mouth of his. Kiki then states to Ginger that he had some private matters to discuss with Lirazi. Ginger tells him that she wants to hear what the private matters were and asks him what did they talk about. Kiki mentions to her that he really doesn't want to hurt her. Upon hearing this statement, Ginger starts yelling at Kiki and questions him about if he's saying that there's really something serious going on between the two of them. Suddenly, Lirazi lets out a laugh. Ginger hears Lirazi laugh, which causes her to turn her head and question her about if she laughed just now. Lirazi ignores the question and instead asks Kiki what he's so afraid of. She also questions him about why didn't he let Ginger hear the love confession he gave to her. Lirazi further mentions to Ginger that she knows what she's afraid of. Lirazi then confirms with Ginger about if she already knows that Kiki will say that he loves her instead, and that's why she burst in here without thinking, like an angry bull. Upon hearing this confirmation, Ginger decides that this is enough. She then reaches her hand out to grab Lirazi's teacup and replies, Yes, you're right. So it's time to show you just what this angry bull is capable of. Upon hearing this response, Lirazi and Kiki both become shocked. Kiki also tells Ginger to calm down and to put the teacup down and listen to what he has to say. However, Ginger states to Kiki to let go and she asks him what does he think he's doing. All of a sudden, Ginger stumbles and starts to fall to the ground. As she's falling, she couldn't help but think that it was a really unlucky day for her. She thought it was so ridiculously terrible that there was no way it could get any worse. However, once Ginger finally hit the floor, she realized that just like that, in an instant, she became the world's most unfortunate protagonist. Ginger then states that this is really messed up to Kiki. Upon hearing this statement, Kiki calls out Ginger's name. 
However, Ginger mentions to Kiki to not say anything. As Ginger is getting up, Kiki tries to say something to her but Ginger interrupts him and states to him that she told him not to say another word. She adds that they should call it a day for now. Kiki agrees with Ginger and offers his hand to help her up. However, Ginger slaps his hand away and tells him not to touch her. She adds that she needs time to process this situation. Once Ginger leaves the room, she starts thinking about how she really doesn't need time. She also wonders how does Kiki expect her to rationally process this stupid situation. As Ginger is angrily walking away from Lirazi's mansion, she further believes that if Kiki even thought about her, his fiancé, for even a second, then he wouldn't have been able to do that. Ginger then thinks that her ill-fated relationship with Lirazi, that has persisted from childhood until now, truly knows no need. Suddenly, Ginger comes to a halt and starts to cry. As she's crying, she decides that since things have come to this, she'll become the real antagonist in Lirazi's life. We then learn about Kishon Michelson. As the son of the renowned Duke Michelson, he was notoriously handsome and had a long list of scandals. His esteemed background made him quite popular with the ladies. In other words, he was one of the kingdom's most famous players. But even with such a disgraceful title, he boasted a tall and attractive appearance, a charming way with words and excellent dancing skills. Whenever he glanced over wearing that look of indifference, there wasn't a woman in his vicinity who could resist his appeal. Ginger was no exception to this. When Kishon, who was so beloved by all, proposed to Ginger, she was too prideful to let it show, but she was over the moon with joy. Secretly, she wanted Lirazi, her rival, to hear the news of her engagement and fall ill from the pain of jealousy. Ginger imagined herself to be a protagonist in one of the romance novels she enjoyed reading. She stupidly thought that her love would cure Kiki's desire to fool around with other women, and she expected that they would be able to leave his womanizing in the past. Ginger truly believed that. We then transition to the next scene where we see Ginger banging her table and stating to herself that they say you can't change a person. She adds that if she didn't hire someone to tail Kiki, then she would have never have found out and he would have made a fool out of her. Ginger also realizes that Kiki just kept trying to avoid talking about the situation and not once did he say that it was a misunderstanding. She further wonders what she's supposed to do now. All of a sudden, one of her maids enters the room and asks her if she's all right. Ginger states to the maid that she isn't really all right as she feels like her head is about to explode from stress. The maid tells her that she did seem rather down after coming back from Lirazi's estate, so she brewed her some warm tea. As the maid is giving Ginger tea, she also suggests her to read her favorite romance novel whilst she drinks the tea as it should help to put her at ease. And upon hearing this suggestion, Ginger agrees with her maid and believes that there's no point in dwelling on it. She also decides that she should actively try to feel better. We further learn that Ginger has more romance novels than she can count on her bookshelf. She's only guilty of dreaming about a happy love story for herself, just like the protagonists of the books. As Ginger sighs, she believes that nothing works better at treating the scars of love than more love. She also smacks her head on the bookshelf since she knows that she doesn't have any new books and has read all of them. All of a sudden, Ginger remembers that there is one novel that she still has yet to read. The story was way too strange, so she ended up stopping before she made it to the end. Ginger then decides to read the novel and learns that the novel is called The Imprisoned Prince and the Marquis's Daughter. It's about a kingdom where there lived two women who were well known. They were both daughters of different marquesses. The first was Lirazi, who had striking red hair. The other was Ginger, who had distinctly auburn hair. As Ginger is staring at the book for a second time, it's still giving her the creeps as she can't believe that the author used real people as inspiration for his or her characters. Ginger then continues reading the book and learns that the two girls absolutely despised one another. The wildly envious Ginger detested seeing Lirazi succeeding in life, and Lirazi hated Ginger's twisted judgments. Like the opposing forces that rule either side of a magnet, the two would always fight upon meeting. As Ginger is thinking, she realizes that it's not just their names that are the same and that it's almost as though the author wrote this after watching her and Lirazi interacting in real life. 
Ginger then questions her maid about if she can remember where she got this novel from and if it was the same bookstore that she usually gets the novels from. The maid replies, No, you've already read all of the books at the bookstore, so I bought it from a store I had never been in before. It caught my eye. What's wrong, miss? Is something the matter? Upon hearing these questions, Ginger starts thinking about how the more she thinks about it, the more curious it seems to her. She can't tell exactly where this book came from. Ginger then continues to read the novel and learns that the girls' fights were usually over certain men. Because, although their personalities were starkly different, they shared a similar taste in men. Upon reading this in the novel, Ginger realizes that this is describing her relationship with Lirazi without a single fault or error. Ginger then continues to read the novel and learns that it was only a matter of time before Lirazi fell for Ginger's fiancé Key, and she used all kinds of devious tricks to steal Kiki out from Ginger's tender embrace. But she never felt any remorse for her actions. Ginger then starts to recall what Lirazi told her earlier and realizes that the novel even knows the events that are transpiring right at this moment. Ginger continues to read the novel and learns that in that same kingdom, there existed a prince whose his face was a mystery to all. His name was Izana. People would refer to him as the imprisoned prince. But nobody knew why he had been locked up in the tower from such a young age. The only one who knew the true reason was his father, King Asthor, who was responsible for imprisoning his son. Upon reading this, Ginger thought that no matter how she looks at it, this book is really ballsy. She then continues to read the book and learns that as time passed by, any memory of the prince faded from the minds of the citizens, and only after King Asthor died, did the tightly sealed doors of the tower finally open. The prince who walked out of the tower seemed to be in remarkably good condition for someone who had spent such a long time in confinement. He had hair as black as coal, skin as white as snow, and sharp eyes that pierced deep into your soul. During his coronation ball, the two women fell for Izana upon first laying their eyes on him. That was the spark, the opening act of a fierce and foolish love triangle. Upon reading up to this point in the novel, Ginger nods in agreement as she's aware that this is a common trope in romance novels. However, she believes that the problem is that she isn't the protagonist of the book. She then slams the book on the ground. Ginger further believes that her role in the book is set as a hindrance to Lirazi and Izana's love. A villainess, through and through, she is aware that her character is blind with jealousy and eventually becomes scorned by Izana. Ginger then flops onto her bed. As she sighs, she decides that she doesn't even have to read the rest as she believes that she knows what happens, which is that they lived happily ever after. Ginger also believes that it's as if the book is written about what is happening in reality. She further knows that the current events are slowly matching the pacing of the story. As Ginger starts to chew on her fingernails, she knows that Izana hasn't left the tower yet in real life and wonders if the novel's story really is foretelling the future. She also wonders if Lirazi doesn't stop taking Kiki from her and manages to capture the heart of Izana too. Ginger then starts to kick and squirm in her bed and shouts out that there's no way and that she'd rather die than let that happen. The maid also notices Ginger squirming and kicking in her bed and asks her what's the matter. However, Ginger ignores the maid and starts to wonder what Lirazi has that she doesn't. She also wonders why she's written as such a malicious character. Ginger further believes that it's not like she's uglier than Lirazi or has a worse personality. She then does a self-reflection and wonders if maybe she's a tiny bit mean. She also thinks that Lirazi is just as bad as her if she really is mean. Ginger then hugs her maid and states to her that she feels even worse now. She also starts to wonder that if the author wanted to dramatize reality and turn it into a book, why must Lirazi be the protagonist here as well? We then transition to the next scene where we see that it's the next day. Kiki and Ginger are sitting at a table together and are drinking tea. Kiki then nervously questions Ginger about how she's feeling today. Ginger shrugs her shoulders and replies, like shit. Thanks to a certain someone, I really felt like shit yesterday, but today I feel even more like shit. Upon hearing this response, 
Kiki tells Ginger that this response is way too foul. He adds that the daughter of a noble family shouldn't use such language. Ginger asks him so what? She also questions him about if he thinks his actions are suitable for the son of a noble family. Kiki ignores her questions and instead mentions to Ginger that the reason he's here today is to apologize to her. Ginger asks him what he's here to apologize for. She also starts thinking about how it's about time and guesses that his conscience kicked in. Kiki then responds, I'm sorry that I fell for Larazi. I'm so sorry. You might think I'm lying, but I really did want to get engaged to you. And I thought that you were the woman who suited me the best. And upon hearing this response, Ginger states to Kiki to get to the point. As she sips her tea, she also decides that she won't forgive him until he's down on his knees begging. Kiki then adds that he thinks that he has fallen in love with Lirazi. This statement shocks Ginger. She then questions Kiki about if that's what he wants to do. Kiki tells her that he still loves her too. This statement makes Ginger jolt out of her seat. She also shouts at Kiki and asks him if he's out of his mind. Kiki mentions to her to not get angry and that he's really confused right now too. As Ginger starts to cry, she wonders if Kiki has his heart set on toying with her until the very end. She also tells him to choose right now her or Lirazi. Kiki attempts to answer the question. However, before he's able to, the maid bursts into the room and calls out to Ginger. Ginger questions the maid about if she can see that she's with a guest. She also states to her that she can't just barge in like that. As the maid is gasping and puffing, she apologizes to Ginger and mentions to her that it's just that the madam was hastily searching for her. Upon hearing this statement, Ginger starts to wonder why her mother is searching for her and what's going on. The maid then states to Ginger that the king has passed away. This news shocks Ginger. Suddenly, the tower bells start to ring. Upon hearing the bells, Ginger turns to see the tower. This is because the moment that the tower bells began to ring, signaling the opening of its doors, she was reminded of a line from the book. The line that she remembered from the book was that on the day of the king's death, the tightly shut doors of the tower are opened. Ginger further realizes that everything is happening the way that it was written in the book. We then switch to the next scene where we that the tower doors creak open. We also see all of the citizens gathered around, eagerly waiting for Azana to come out. All of a sudden, the citizens notice that he's finally coming out. Izana then walks out of the tower and looks exactly like how the book described him to be. Please make sure to subscribe. Special thanks to all of my Patreon members. Why not watch another manhole recap on my channel by clicking on this video right here 